Okay, I want to take a look just briefly here at um, the inverse trig functions because we're going to use them on a couple of occasions in some of the application problems. Um, what it's going to allow us to do is to calculate angles. So our definition of the trig functions here, let's say, look at this angle A here. I know that the, the sine of angle A is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. There's the right angle. So 3 divided by 5. What the inverse trig function does is goes the other way. So sine takes the angle A and gives you back 3 fifths, or 0.6 if you want it as a decimal, right? The inverse trig function, which we write this way, sine to the minus 1, sine inverse, the input now is going to be this output. Sine inverse of 0.6 should be angle A. So the trig function takes the angle and sends it to the ratio of sides. The inverse trig function takes the ratio of sides and sends it to the angle. In this way we can figure out what the angle is. For instance, I'm going to grab my calculator. Okay, so I've got my calculator and clear the stuff that's there. What I want to do is I want to say what's the sine inverse of 0.6. This will tell me what angle has a sine equal to 0.6. So I know what the sine is, I want to know what the angle is. And this is saying 36.8698, whatever, 36.87, let's say. So back over here, I slide this back into view. Uh, this just told me that the sine inverse of 0.6 is 36.87 degrees. Okay. With my calculator in degree mode, inverse sine will tell me answers in degrees. Right? Likewise, suppose you know the information that I know, uh, let's just have a, a triangle over here, suppose I know that I'm looking for this angle right here, theta, uh, this is length 7, this is length 5, 15. Um, the question is, what's the angle? Well, this angle, these two sides, the cosine of the angle is 7 over 15. Right? That's the trig relationship. The angle is the input. I have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, so let's make that a cosine. Cosine is 7 over 15. To find the angle, I need the inverse operation. I need the cosine inverse of the 7 over 15. Typing that into my calculator. Here we go. Slide the calculator back over. Get this out of the way so all the lighting adjusts a little bit. If I say second from cosine, that's the cosine inverse of, what did I say, 7 divided by 15? So the cosine inverse of 7 divided by 15 is 62. So 62.2, let's say. So clearly, so clearly my picture is not to scale because this is at 62.2 apparently I really should have had that one drawn more like this where it's standing up pretty tall 7 and 15 to get that 62.2 degrees right that when I just sketch the graph I don't necessarily know how big it was I just know I wanted a side like 7 I want a side like 15 what's the angle 62.2. That's what the inverse trig function tells you. So depending on the two sides you have, right, in the first example I used 3 and 5, those were the sine of 5. In the second example here I've got 7 and 15, that's the cosine. And likewise if you had something uh, using, let's take one more example and throw in here, suppose the side length here is 3 the side length there is 4, what's this angle? Right. Well, if you're paying attention here, this is actually the same triangle as the first one, so I know what the answer is. But let's look at it from a different point of view. This angle here, I'll call it theta, the, the two sides that I have for that angle is the opposite and adjacent, so that would be the tangent of theta is 3 over 4. So theta is the inverse tangent of 3 over 4. The trig function takes the angle in, gives you the ratio of sides out. The inverse trig function takes the ratio of sides in, and the angle comes out. Typing that into my calculator, there we go. Oh. Typing that into my calculator, I'm going to say 
second function of tangent is tangent inverse 3 divided by 4 because that's the ratio of sides and this should be the same answer as the first one if there's any justice here and sure enough 36.869 so we got the same answer as before I'm going to write that in right here as theta equals 36.8 doesn't look like a 36 36.87 degrees Okay, the inverse trig function. This is very much like using any kind of inverse function. I mean, if you were looking at an equation like um, the square root of x equals 3, right? how would you solve for x? Well, how do you get rid of the square root? What's the inverse operation to square rooting? Well, squaring, so square both sides. And then you get an x on this side, and you get 3 squared on that side. How do you get the tangent out of there? Well, you have to do the inverse operation to tangent. That is, take the inverse tangent. Okay. It's exactly the same thing, except for trig functions. We will investigate these things in much more depth later on in the quarter. But for now, we'll use them just to, just to calculate some small angles.